You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in Acts chapter 24, and we'll be reading from the New English Translation. After five days, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney named Tertullus, and they brought formal charges against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, We have experienced a lengthy time of peace through your rule, and reforms are being made in this nation through your foresight. Most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this everywhere and in every way with all gratitude. But so that I may not delay you any further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. For we have found this man to be a troublemaker, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to desecrate the temple, so we arrested him. When you examine him yourself, you will be able to learn from him about all these things we are accusing him of doing. The Jews also joined in the verbal attack, claiming that these things were true. When the governor gestured for him to speak, Paul replied, Because I know that you have been a judge over this nation for many years, I confidently make my defense. As you can verify for yourself, not more than twelve days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. They did not find me arguing with anyone or stirring up a crowd in the temple courts or in the synagogues or throughout the city nor can they prove to you the things they are accusing me of doing. But I confess this to you, that I worship the God of our ancestors according to the way, which they call a sect, believing everything that is according to the law and that is written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that these men themselves accept too, that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. This is the reason I do my best to always have a clear conscience toward God and toward people. After several years, I came to bring to my people gifts for the poor and to present offerings, which I was doing when they found me in the temple, ritually purified, without a crowd or a disturbance. But there are some Jews from the province of Asia who should be here before you and bring charges, if they have anything against me. Or these men here should tell what crime they found me guilty of when I stood before the council, other than this one thing I shouted out while I stood before them. I am on trial before you today concerning the resurrection of the dead. Then Felix, who understood the facts concerning the way more accurately, adjourned their hearing, saying, When Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to guard Paul, but to let him have some freedom, and not to prevent any of his friends from meeting his needs. Some days later, when Felix arrived with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. While Paul was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for now, and when I have an opportunity, I will send for you. At the same time, he was also hoping that Paul would give him money. And for this reason, he sent for Paul as often as possible and talked with him. After two years had passed, Portius Festus succeeded Felix, and because he wanted to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege of being able to read it together today. And we thank you for the clear testimony that you spoke through the Apostle Paul toward those who were making accusations against him. We can see that Paul was put on trial because of his faith in your son Jesus Christ and his hope in the resurrection of the dead that you will accomplish. We're grateful, Father, that through faith in your son Jesus Christ, we are promised that we will be resurrected from death, granted the gift of a glorified body, 
and live in your presence for all eternity. We're grateful that this is a hope that we have the privilege to look forward to. And we're grateful for the many ways that in your word you assure us of this hope. Thank you, Lord, for these gifts. Thank you for these blessings. And thank you for your presence with us today. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. What kind of difference would it make if you could spend the next 31 days of your life seeing yourself from God's eyes? My newest book, Dwell on These Things, will help you do just that. Every day our hearts and minds fill with messages about ourselves, about the world, and about God. Messages that we replay in our minds again and again. Some of those messages are accurate and helpful, but some are the exact opposite of the truths that the Lord wants us to embrace. In Dwell on These Things, I'm going to show you how you can replace feelings of discouragement with a sense of God's goodness. How you can practice seeing yourself in the loving way God sees you. How you can exchange negative self-talk for positive biblical messages. And how you can learn to face each day with hope in your heart. To pick up your copy of Dwell on These Things, please visit desirejesus.com slash dwell on these things where you'll find links to order it from your favorite retailer.